Mix bus compression. Here we go. So first I wanted to discuss with you my thoughts and my approach to how and when I use mixed bus compression and when I don't use mixed bus compression. And then I'm gonna show you my settings, the compressor that I use. And what I hope is that by the end of this video, you will have a much better grasp on mixed bus compression, on when to use it and when not to use it, what settings to use and how hard you should be hitting it. That was loud. Woo. Also, I am partnering with Oratone to give away a pair of Oratone 5Cs. More on that in a minute, so hang out. Firstly, what is mixed bus compression? For those of you that don't know, mixed bus compression is when you put a compressor, hardware or software, two channel compressor on your mix bus and it compresses the entire mix all together. Now, one of the most important things that I think people miss when getting started using bus compression, mix bus compression, is that you should have it on from the very beginning of the mix. If you've ever heard anyone say you're mixing through something, this is kind of what they're talking about. So so when I open up a new session, the very first thing that I do is I put my mix bus chain together. I have a whole video on this called top down mixing. And so the very first thing that I do is I put my preamps on my mix bus and my bus compressor on my mix bus. And I start getting it to hit exactly how I want it level wise. Now we're gonna get to settings and how hard I hit it in a minute. But I think it's really important that you mix through compression from the very beginning of the mix if you're gonna use it. Cause there's something weird that happens that when you get halfway through a mix or 90% of the way through the mix and then you put compression on it, it doesn't work. That, that, that doesn't work. It's certainly not the way to get the most out of a mix bus compressor. So mix into it from the very start. Before we get to more, I wanna talk about when I do use bus compression and when I don't use bus compression. Now, most often for me personally, I use bus compression on 100% of the music that I work on that is organic. Does it have real drums? real guitars, real keys or whatever. If it's any sort of organic style music, I'm absolutely using a bus compressor on my mix bus. Now on any sort of music that is entirely electronic, this is where I may or may not use bus compression. See, when you're mixing a song that is based all on real instruments, the goal is to get all those real instruments to sound as good as humanly possible. Getting a kick drum and a snare drum to sound fantastic is actually not that easy. But if you've got an 808 and an 808 snare and a synth bass, that sounds great just the way it is with no EQ and no compression. So the questions I ask myself when I'm working on electronic music, is this compressor going to make things sound bigger or smaller? And unfortunately, I, I can't answer that for you. You have to try it. But what I do is I'll push the kick drum sound and the snare drum sound or whatever it is, 808 and claps or whatever that percussion element is in your song. I push that up. I push uh, whatever bass element, whether it's bass guitar or synth bass or whatever, I push that up and I get just a rough balance level wise between these elements. And then I put compression on does it sound better or worse? Now I'm gonna to get to the settings that I would use for this sort of thing in a second, but does it sound better or worse? Does the song sound bigger and more powerful or did it lose some punch when I put this compressor on it? I don't think there's any right or wrong answer to this. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Some songs it sounds better, some songs it doesn't. And if you happen to be working on a song that doesn't sound better with mix bus compression, cool. You've tried it, you know it doesn't sound as good, keep moving on about your mix. Now, so that's kind of where I stand on when I use bus compression and when I don't use bus compression, I use it from the beginning of the mix 100% of the time, and I use bus compression on my mix bus 100% of the time I'm working on organic, real instrument-based music, and maybe about 50 or 60% of the time in pop and R&B style stuff, I'm using bus compression and 40 or 50% of the time on that electronic based music, I'm not using bus compression. So before we jump in and look at the settings that I actually use on my bus compressor, I uh, just wanna let you guys know there's links in the description to every piece of gear that I own and use. If you use those links, it goes a long ways to help support the channel and you don't have to buy just the things in those links. Anytime you need any piece of musical gear, you can jump on any one of my videos, click any one of the links, purchase anything it is that you need, it costs you nothing extra, 
but it really helps the channel out. Those links go to Sweetwater, Sweetwater sponsoring this video. So thank you very much to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. Okay, let's take a look at my settings for my mix bus compressor, and then we're gonna explain a few more things here. Okay, so this is my bus compressor that stays on my mix bus. This is a Serpent SB4001. You can use kind of whatever. I mean, there's a bunch of great options out there. I've landed on this one. I really like it. But more importantly, I want to walk you guys through my settings. So the first thing is a ratio. What kind of ratio is appropriate for a mix bus compressor? For me personally, uh, I am a fan of low ratios. You can see here, it's currently set to 1.5 to 1. Now, sometimes I'll put it up to 2 to 1, but I'm really not a fan of 4 to 1 or anything higher than that. 1.5 to 1, 2 to 1, that's the move in my opinion. So the next setting I wanna talk about is the attack. Now these attack is in milliseconds on this particular compressor, most are, uh, and this particular one is set to 20 milliseconds. And this is one of the things that I actually like about this uh, compressor over the actual SSL is the additional attack and release and ratio times that this has that the SSL does not have. But somewhere between uh, 10 to 25 uh, milliseconds of attack. That's kind of my favorite settings on a mix bus compressor. Now for the release time, I'm pretty much a fan of a fast release on just about every compression that I use for anything. Mix bus is no exceptions. So on this particular one, you've got a couple of preset uh, release times. A1 and A2 are like the SSL automatic uh, release time, but this compressor has a variable release time. So this knob is completely sweepable so you can really Really dial in exactly what you want, but I have it set at the fastest release time this compressor is capable of, of 0.1 seconds or 100 milliseconds. Another cool thing about this particular compressor is that it has a side chain filter built into it. Now I'm usually either on the 90 hertz or 120 hertz, and what this does is everything below that frequency is not fed into the uh, compressor detection circuit. So that way, if I want really thick uh, sub bass on my kick or on my actual bass or synthesizers or whatever, it's not triggering the compressor nearly as hard with those low frequencies as it is from everything above whatever frequency I have it set at. Obviously, with all compressors, you would just uh, set the threshold to whatever makes sense for the gain reduction you are after. Now, I'm going to hit play on a mix that I actually just finished. This is a song by Taylor Teasley called Join the Club. I just finished it. It's it's not out yet, but you can kind of see gain reduction wise where I'm hitting. Here we go. Now that's a pretty typical range for me. Uh, I usually won't ever go above 4 dB of compression, and that's on something really dense and thick and heavy and aggressive. And the less dense and the less aggressive and the less heavy a mix is, the lighter I will usually keep it. I always set this based on the loudest part of the song. So on the loudest part of every song, it never goes above 4 dB, but on the loudest section of a very, very chill song, the needle is still moving at some point, uh, but you got to dial that into taste and that's what's important. Now, unfortunately, there's not really any good way for me to let you guys hear like before and afters, because like I already mentioned, you need to mix through this compression from the very beginning. And so just bypassing the compressor is not going to give you an accurate representation of if it is better or worse. I think this is one of the hardest things about setting up your mix bus is that before and afters are really difficult because you have to work your way through the entire mix with these things on your mix bus in order to actually get the full results out of it. But these settings that I've just showed you should work on any compressor, hardware or software. It should absolutely get you in the ballpark. Bus compression is one of my absolute favorite things, and I would encourage you guys to spend some time on it, really experiment with different settings, different compressors, and mix through it from the very beginning. Don't forget links down below for the compressor that I use or for any other piece of gear that I use. And there is one more thing we need to talk about. I've partnered with Oratone to give away a pair of Oratone 5Cs. These are the active versions, the brand new ones that just got launched at NAMM uh, a few months ago. I use these monitors on every single mix. They're one of the most important parts of my studio, and I'm really pumped to be able to give one of them to you. 
Do not fall for any scams. Don't fall for people replying to your comments saying that you've won. I'm not gonna ask for any money. You're not gonna pay anything for these or for shipping. You are going to be notified via a reply to your entry email. So you need to follow myself on Instagram. You need to follow Oratone on Instagram. I'll put their, all the links in the description below. And then you need to email your Instagram handle to Colt Caparoon giveaway at gmail.com. I'll put that down below as well. We're gonna give you guys a few weeks to enter. So be sure to enter, follow us both on Instagram. And I'm really pumped that Oratone has agreed to let me give a pair of these away. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Yeah, yeah.